Wednesday, August 14, 2019. <coughs> Excuse me. Review of work session discussion meeting minutes. I do not have it. I don't either. I reviewed what the August 7th and the. Yes. Okay. I don't have any. On to department head report. I have a question and I'm prepared to answer any questions you might have. Uh, my question is have we approved, my guys are ready to start the uh, project for the uh, sheriff's? The, the groom? Yes. Has he came and talked to anyone else? I, I know he's mentioned it to me in passing about the law changes, the law changing of. Um, we haven't met is with the, him. Is it PFA? Is yeah, it's with PFA. It's a storage of, of weapons. Um, he sent out the email. The last conversation I had with him was just that email asking if anyone wanted to go down and look at his office itself. I haven't heard anything from him since then. Does I had I had the comment that you know with the DA having a room down on this first floor and then the sheriff having a room off of his office. We're, we're getting away from having our departments have their things within their <clears throat> their area. It just seems like it's it's getting very choppy in here and I would I don't know the architecture of it and apparently there isn't any space so if, if that's the case what are you going to do? I, I, I just you can't. Know, he needs a secure room. Yeah. I would, I would like it in the sheriff's department. He's got that whole corner. It, it, the entire row of the courthouse is the sheriff's. I can't imagine that there aren't, there isn't any room. Yeah, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've been down the sheriff's office. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a tour. Gary, <laughs> uh, his email invited us to go down and look at his office, what he currently uses and the space he has, and then what he wants to do. I would assume, can you explain? It's going to be, it's a room inside of a room, right? Yes, yeah, sir, it's a room inside of a room. Um, when, you, when you, the room is empty. Okay, so that's what the, the room's empty. When you walk into the room, uh, you, you would go in this way and then it opens up like this. What we are going to do is, about halfway through the room, build a block wall all the way up to the roof. It has to go all the way up so you, can, you, know, you just can't pop over the tile and go in. Um, there's no windows. They would go get a pillar wall across this way and this way and add a door right here, a, a steel door that with a keypad and everything like that. So you know keep track of who's in and out of there. That's what uh, that's what we're that's what the sheriff is looking for and that's what we are asking to do. So for the rest of the room, what would it be used for? We, I mean, the, 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 uh, Kevin Tosta has some stuff down so there. So it might be more of a store. So I guess my question is who's gonna have access to the main door going into the room of the room. Kevin Tostic would have access. I mean, I have people would have access to the rooftop maintenance yeah. staff, you know, the guys here at the DPW. Um, I, but sit up if you still have stuff mm -hmm. that yeah. we can yeah. Different, uh, yeah, there's, So yeah, people would have access to that. But not, not, not to the Not to this, yeah, it would be a, it would be a different. Does this have to be in the courthouse? Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be, but this, these are these are for weapons that are associated with PFA, so it has to be somewhere else on the county property. That that's the only room that works for him. Because he looked at another room as well, correct? I believe it's the only room that has enough. If it's large enough. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. He actually looked at the word Tammy Franks. There's a window, wasn't there? Yeah, a window? yeah it's, it's not. A, it's, it's there's a window, and there's also it's a, um, a, a drywall frame wall. Frame wall. Okay. That's the only only one there is. Is that your recommendation? Is that is that your recommendation that that's the only place we have in this whole complex? I would think so. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, no. As long as the law department, I mean, yeah. we, so we, 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 yeah, we have to store them by, by, by law.
the department heads. Any questions for Dan? Did you look at Brush Creek Road yet? Or uh, getting the different options? We are very close. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we'll move to solicitor's report. The RFQ for the reassessment project is going out. It's going to be in the paper on Monday. Potential uh, applicants have until September 23rd to submit their request for their packet, at which point we'll review. So just wanted to keep you updated on what's going on with that. Last week we discussed that we had a request for pea gravel to be put over in uh, New Brighton. There is a group that wants to start a child gardening, similar to what to do with the poorly adults and senior citizens here in Beaver County. Been speaking with Dan and speaking with Corey about the logistics of being able to do that. Uh, Dan has gotten some quotes. It looks like the quotes are going to be uh, below $1,000 in order to do it. Corey said that we do have that in the budget. He can uh, find money for that. Uh, the, the, the entity currently does own the property. However, they're saying that in about three or four weeks would probably be a better time for them to, to go about doing it. So he's gonna let me know uh, time-wise whenever they're all right with it being done. At which point, uh, we'll let Dan know, he'll order it and, and get it delivered over there. Uh, the, the actual address, it's, it's the corner of 15th Street and 5th Avenue in Brighton. It's gonna be similar to what we have by there's going to be raised beds in there. They're, they're in the process of applying for other grants for it as well, too. And I've made sure that, he said, this project is going forward whether or not they get the grants. Because uh, I didn't want it to be a situation where it's only contingent upon grants that they're attempting to get. So it is moving forward regardless. Um, and they're going to contact us whenever they're ready for the delivery. And then just one for the purpose of the public making known. Yesterday there was a, a rally here in regards to uh, some of the issues I believe were involving in an anti-Trump rally. Others had to deal with uh, the economic, or excuse me, the environmental impact of the Shell facility. The county did get a proposal for them in order to have that rally. Underneath the First Amendment of the Constitution, the, the representatives of this courthouse can't either deny or allow rally based on the content of what that rally is. So I just want to make it known to everyone that the rally yesterday did submit the appropriate request form and pursuant to what we do with any of those request forms, the rally moves forward as long as there isn't any type of security issues. Many times that's blocking the streets, blocking access to the courthouse and that wasn't done yesterday. Nor was there any electric use from the courthouse and blowing up any of the balloons. The individuals brought in their own generator. I just want to make the public aware that that rally had nothing to do with whether anyone on this board, anyone in the courthouse either agreed or disagreed with the actual contents of it. We were actually a little surprised when we saw the balloons. Yeah, yeah there, there was a little bit of confusion, but we did verify that the individual who submitted the form, those balloons were, were associated with, with their request. And then finally, we need an executive session in order to discuss a real estate matter, and I also believe there's personal matters as well, too. Personal matters as well, too. Also, uh, did firefighters come and check the alarm system? Yes, they did. It's, 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 um, it's, it's, it's temporarily repaired. They have ordered a new detector for that zone 59. As soon as it's in, they will get here and put a new, new detector in. So was the alarm pulled or did the alarm go off? It's, it's, it's another a faulty detector. It was not pulled. Well, that's ear piercing. That's your yes. Is the job done? Right. <laughs> Any other questions for the law department? Right. We'll move to commissioner's reports. I just have one thing. We met uh, yesterday with, or the other day with Crossword Roads, Continual Care, and Cornerstone. Um, and we got, I, I happened to look at my email this morning. We got a copy of a proposal from. Lisa Signor, as we asked her to find out about the cost of the uh, 
driver. Car driver, get a driver to take uh, the homeless people oh, to and from some of their uh, everybody else. And uh, here's her answer. Here's uh, the, the actual budget itself. It's broken down, driver salary, payroll taxes, and travel expense. And here's the grand total. And she needs she wants to know uh, if we're okay with it so she can prepare the paperwork to get the money. So to explain, <coughs> excuse me, um, since Crossroads Men's Shelter is not functioning right now, what is going on is the cornerstone is taking individuals who may need shelter and placing them places, whether it's a hotel or to another county's homeless shelter, and the cornerstone is driving them and doing and putting them in these hotels. What's happening is the cornerstone's budget is being liquidated, I guess you could say, because there's they were actually taking people to Greene County, and it could take a whole day. It could take a whole day to get them mm -hmm. there and back, so they're requesting a part-time driver so they don't have to take an employee out of the office to do something. I think they don't need to go to Greene County once. It's mostly Butler and Washington County in uh, and, uh, and hotels throughout throughout the area, and it's hard to find a hotel here in Beaver County because of the construction workers, so they're, they're going other places. So this request was made from the Cornerstone to Lisa Signor, for more funds for a part-time driver. And I, I believe Lisa Singer said it's not a problem. She has right, the money, but it has, would have to be approved from the board. So, do we want to do it? Do we have to do that? At, uh, can we make that? Yeah, you can make a motion. Well, can we make that, this, if we're all okay with it here, sign off on it, and then? Yeah, then we'll push it through with the resolution stuff. So. Ratified, okay. I, 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 I want to say, I think that it should be 14,000, just make sure everyone's yeah. clear. Yeah, there's an extra, yeah, they missed it. <laughs> Can't do it right here for $14? Sign off on this one. Sign off on this one. I'm okay with it. I, I, I am, am too. as well. But they are also looking for a long-term and short-term plan for Crossroads. I think the board is also looking at potentially putting a RFP out to see if there's any other organizations that like to run a homeless shelter if something doesn't move forward here quickly with Crossroads. Okay. I think that, you know, That's Lisa right. is looking very diligently at the Cornerstone and at Salvation Army and all of those places that help the homeless because of the situation of Crossroads um, being in the middle of uh, finding a new director, having a shelter in place, and I think that all of those groups are trying to work together to get that. But you know, because of the issues with Crossroads, it's putting a massive strain on those other entities. And, and yeah. anything that we can do to help those enter entities survive through this, I'm I'm in favor for. Um, th this seems. A very like a very small amount to help. Um, I like to continue that conversation with Lisa to see, you know, if there are any other avenues in which we can take to um, further fund those entities through this this period of time. Thanks for bringing that up, Tony. Sure. Answered my Tim, Tim's not here. I wanted to follow up on the hotel audit um, and the economy pool I brought up last time, and he wasn't here. Uh, I noticed that um, we received the information from our health care auditor. What's uh, Puda? Yeah. Our um, our price per member uh, is going up substantially this year, and I'm a little concerned by that because. That trickles down to all of our um, departments. Um, price per member was uh, for last month, uh, June. Well, June is what I have is uh, sixteen hundred. Um, last year it was right around a thousand. Um, so it's it, the price is going up, and just to be mindfully aware, I think is what we need to kind of keep an eye on it because I know there's. A lot of line items that we're watching, just to watch that. Just it's catastrophic losses. You know, there's no way to Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, the county's self-funded. I'm not spending <laughs> money. The, the county's self-funded, so those can fluctuate at various times depending on if we have a lot of claims for that particular time or not. Right, but to be aware, mm -hmm. it was it was steady for 18. Now it's it's like jagged here for the months, and uh, would like to thank uh, Connor Lamb for the county. Uh, you know, writing the letter to the, the president on behalf of the county about the um, about the uh, IRS lien. Uh, I'm hoping that that gets resolved. Yeah, still Very haven't quickly. heard anything officially back from the IRS on that. Okay. All right. Anything else from the board? Any other business? Hearing none, audience participation. Mr. Woolley? How are you? Two quick things, <clears throat> both financial. Have we had a second quarter report, or when are we going to see him again to talk about year-end forecasts? He hasn't been up for uh, to the public meeting for quite a while, has he? No, he was just here recently, but he didn't yeah. come in for the public meeting. When is he scheduled? He's scheduled for the August the twentieth. I think in two weeks. Yeah. So he will be at the public meeting then. That's a Wednesday. He could be here. Yeah. Twenty eighth. 28th, August 28th. Okay, because I think we should at least know what is going on financially. Are we going to be on the plus side or because of the big find of money, or are the voting booths going to put a lien on the county, not so not legal lien, but... The, the voting booths, the voting machines were budgeted for the 2019 budget, so it's not going to affect the budget. How much was put in for that? Uh, Three hundred and some thousand. It's a contract. It's a contract over, over a period of five years. Period of five, five years. years. Five years. Okay. And plus, we did receive money through the state for that for half, or maybe a little more than half of the first year's payments. So. Because um, continued letters to them, yeah. I hope will mean something, because that was outlandish to require it be done. Okay, so financially. Second quarter, you think we're in good shape and voting booths are They're budgeted. adequately budgeted. Okay. All right. Mr. Wright? Yes. May I approach you? Yes. Well, thank you for uh, putting me on the agenda. Thank you, Senator Green. Thank you. This is my card. Thank you. I'm Bob Wright. I'm a principal, I'm also an architect and a construction manager. Um, I grew up in, in Beaver County, went to school here, went to college at, at Geneva, and so I've got many family and, and friends in, in this area. And so I welcome the opportunity to uh, just to introduce myself as well as the Stantec to you. Stantec is an international uh, professional consulting firm. We specialize in planning architecture, engineering, and program management. So it's a, a very broad and encompassing uh, group of services. And our, if you go on our website, which is www.stantech.com, you'll see that we're all about community involvement and engagement. And so I'm here to want to introduce the company and the firm to you, but also to talk about opportunities that you may have where we could assist by volunteering on authorities, on committees, wherever there's a need, because that's really what we're, we're all about, and it's community engagement and, and, and support. So I don't expect you to have necessarily have answers here today, but as you, you think about as opportunities come up, and if we can assist in any way, we'd be happy to, to do so. Thanks. I would suggest that you would, um, if you have a portfolio, to give it to our purchasing department, which is Wayne. Um, Cindy can help you with that. And we also have projects coming out of our community de and economic, um, economic development um, through Lisa Signor over in uh, Beaver Falls, and Cindy can connect you with that. That's so. when I saw they were recently approved for an RCAP grant. Right. That's at the same. Well, that that doesn't. It's not contracted through the Crown County. We were a we call it a an endorser. You're the grantee uh, and the, yes, okay. but we don't. I've to actually <coughs> go through that contract with them. I understand. Yeah. I work with the RCAP oh, quite a bit in the okay. past, so I'm familiar with that. 
And you might want to introduce yourself to um, our director of, rec of uh, planning and redevelopment, Lance Grable. I've already met with Lance so awesome. a while okay. back. So yes. Sounds like you've covered well, the bases. Great suggestions. Thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity you. again. Thanks Thank for you very much. Any other audience participation? Thank you, Scott. Thanks. Any other? Yes. Uh, first couple for the law department. Um, uh, actually, one of them was the PFA turning issue. Uh, I write the law, and my understanding is the, the individual that's subject to that law has options as to where they turn it in. One of which can be the local jurisdiction of where they live, so their local police department. Another is a licensed gun dealer. Um, it doesn't actually, the, the law, the way I read it, doesn't actually delineate the sheriff's office, but it seems pretty well covered. Is there is there talk about why the sheriff's office is going to be collecting all these guns versus making them, these individuals, turn them over to the police departments where the individual resides? I haven't had any conversation with the sheriff as far as why. I, I don't have to be speculating about an answer. I don't know if the local municipalities are willing or have the ability to store it. I don't know, though. I haven't had any conversations with them. Okay. The way I read the law, I'm, uh, I mean, and I'm not an attorney, I'm not sure that if they have the option to not accept them. I've talked to several law enforcement authorities it seems to be something like like the county grappling with storage it seems to be it's it's a concern in the municipality level as well so i wasn't sure if that had been discussed or if the, the board had had a discussion with the law department with the sheriff i, I think we could have a discussion with the probably the chiefs of police association as well I mean, yeah i mean the other issue you have is, is some some departments don't even have police departments you know, yeah, I, yeah I, I just didn't know if those discussions that yeah, occurred yeah, I, I, I don't I, just, I can't answer that i don't know okay um another one is also sort of sheriff's office related there had been a resolution um, on the table before the board about the contracting of a canine uh, for the sheriff's office. Um, there were meetings beforehand. The resolution wasn't voted for. The resolution was then taken off the table, and the sheriff, uh, I don't want to use the word, was permitted to, but it was understood that the sheriff would enter into that contract himself. Um, I've researched the law, being not an attorney, and spoke to several attorneys, and I keep getting referred to Section 1801 of the Pennsylvania County Code which is ironically titled, Commissioners Sole Contractors for the County. Uh, so I guess my question is, why did the Law Department originally believe that the board was required to ratify that contract? And what changed its mind to believe that it no longer has to ratify it if the sheriff has unilateral authority to engage in, in contracting? It's our understanding with that, Dalton, that there was no money being spent from the county coffers for it. Uh, it's no different than a personal matter that Sheriff makes some decision within his office regarding a personal matter that's within his office and how to do it. Is the canine considered a personnel? It's an officer. Is there a position created by the salary board for the canine? It, there was already one there. There was a position created by the salary board for a canine? I don't believe the salary board created a position, but there, were, there was a canine there before. There is currently one there now. Well, there's two there now. My understanding was the reason why they were not there is because it turned out there wasn't a contract for the dogs to be there and they were privately owned and there was no legal um, binding between the canine and the county and that's why the dogs were uh, gone for a period of time. So my understanding was the purpose of this was to create some sort of re legal relationship between the county and the dog. There's a lease between the sheriff and the canine proper or canine owner of that dog. That's the extent of the involvement that, that there is between the sheriff and the canine that I'm aware of. Is the lease is the lease a contract? Yes. So it's the law department's position that elected road officials can enter into contracts. They do it all the time with whenever you have anything that we have uh, leasing of copy machines. I talked to Professor Perry Warmer about that issue, and she said when she leased her last copy machine, she had to go through and it was actually ratified by the board. I, I don't know how you want me to answer that moving forward, other than the, this issue has already been decided, this, the sheriff entered into the lease agreement, you can ask him the con any questions that you would have regarding it. Well, I don't really have questions for, for about that particular lease. My question is generally, does the board have to ratify contracts, or does the law department believe that elected road officials can bind the county on individually on their own? It's part of a, a larger, I guess, question. Let me pull the canine out of it and just say in general, can an elected road official bind the county in a contract, or does the board have to ratify? I think it depends on what the actual contract is. I mean, there's certainly times that, that a row officer, an elected official, will do that on their own as our time it comes through the, the commissioners, depending on what particular, that particular issue is. Okay, and I got one more question with another issue um, going back uh, a little ways. 
um, to the meeting that um, Dan Camp and Tony Medeo had with Mount Airy that when they originally had the meeting was under a non-disclosure agreement and after Mount Airy formally announced that they were building a casino here or they were, they were intending to, um, the board made it clear that that basically dissolved the NDA. We, the board then gave uh, some quotes to the Beaver County Times and I believe to us as well about that meeting and, and began disclosing more about it. Um, in the recent weeks, I've had a, a couple sources uh, bring some up to me about that meeting that I'd like to confirm. During the course of that meeting, did Lewis de Naples and Pat Nardelli leave the meeting to discuss and negotiate the sale price of that property? I cannot answer. I wasn't there. I was. Uh, we were in the room with uh, representatives from the Authority and Mount Airy and um, Big Beaver. Big, Big Beaver was on. Did they leave the room? Nar did Nardelli and and the Naples get up from the table and go to another area? After our meeting, we left. left. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other audience participation? Just a reminder, next week is Hookstown Fair. Mm -hmm. I <coughs> Friday is the town here on legislative lunch, and I don't know if anybody's scheduled to change. May we make it being moved from Macaroni Farm down to First Energy Pavilion at Hookstown Fair. And also, I saw Mr. Macaroni the other day, he's doing very good. So we'll start walking this week. He's in the in his area, chair. He was hoping to get up on a walk and start moving a little bit, so he's come along with that. And I've been asked by the Bureau of Finance Reservation and Harrisburg to come to Peg Cargo Stage tomorrow because Senator Vogel's farm is going to be issued a certificate for Century Farm. We've been working on that for about a year and a half to try to get this thing moved along. And we finally got the fruition on tomorrow. So they're going to put on the farm at Peg Cargo Stage. is in Rock Springs about nine miles south of State College. What was that date again, Joe? Which one? The dinner. The dinner. Uh, the meeting. The meeting is 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, Friday, right? It's Friday the 23rd at uh, roughly 9.30, quarter to 10. Hooks, it's at the fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I have a conflict, but that's why I have it. I asked. So that's the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Executive session and not reconvene. Thank you.